No, I refuse. Now, dance, monkey. <laughs> Come on. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show. It covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Proton Tricks is in desperate need of a new maintainer because the developers went back to loving Windows. Yes, that warm embrace of Redmond. And we get our first RTX title on Linux. It's quick too, but hey, you still had RTX. Artifact continues to tank. Karn, you believe it? And once again, we learn to never leave your beaver unattended, especially when it's backing up your game server. Steam hits three, uh, sorry, 30,000 games, and most of them are not particularly good. Kind of like that intro there. And after having a bit of an uproar on their hands, Unity backs down from the shaky-ass ground that they were standing on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Vin here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, joined every week by my heterosexual life partner up in Toronto land. That is one Jordan Sfang, and all the way, the man on the island. You know him, you love him one, Pedro Mateus. Because oh. they're hanging out with everyone down there, that shot realm dynamic, forming the last little bit, known as Cocaine Voltron. Lads, the f*** is up this week. Uh... Did anybody? No, no one wrote shit. So I'm going to randomly pick Pedro. <laughs> well, I spent the whole week at home uh, doing a bit of a course on no, uh, Windows Server 2016. Yes, <laughs> you you got listen, man. You got so bored. I saw you in the show notes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's like I'm home and they're talking about VMs and just how limited uh hyper v is because it is stupidly limited everything you take for granted like virtual box or vmware hyper v can't do it so yeah no uh, some days i was just like okay all right shut down <laughs> that, 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 so, that was yeah. me that was me during amazon trading i was like i, I was i was dicking around discord on the show notes at some point yeah. i started playing ftl <laughs> <laughs> like <fuck it. laughs> Outside of Snowman, what's up in Toronto? Oh, uh, I mean, I've I've been I've been going to a bunch of job interviews day in and day out, trying to try to secure employment so I can secure living conditions, so I can secure the plane ticket to California, so I can go put Strider in headlock. Um, Yay! Fanfic. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. When when Mike G posted that uh, cocaine Voltron thing, I was I've, I've thought back to that last season of Voltron, and we're like. Yeah, that was pretty cocaine fueled. It explains why that didn't make any sense. <laughs> um, what, 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 what about you, Vin? I hear you had some, you had some, uh, you had a moral dilemma you had to, you had to deal with. Oh man, if you're a patron, uh, <laughs> go go watch the uh, pre pre super shows and listen to it. You get your own custom RSS feed. Hey, look, shilling right at the beginning of the show. Wah, wah. <clears throat> no, I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing. Mm -mm. Just no. regular ordinary did, week. Did, did, here, here at old did, man Vin's house. Didn't didn't get that free sync G sync RTX free? <laughs> no baby, nope. Just RTX know. on over at uh, at Venstones. <laughs> I, I mean, it looks like Ven's RTX turned on. Am I right? Hey baby, <laughs> that's the thing. These things weigh a fucking. I can imagine because this is the short bus, ladies and gentlemen. This is twenty sixty. I don't have a review for you this week because I've legitimately had it less than twenty four hours of like functional time with it, and I. I like it. If you uh, oh, go ahead, if you're like, I need to know right now. Um, if you have anything less than a 980 Ti, go ahead and buy it. Yeah, no, it's pretty much in line with all the reviews we've seen up to this <laughs> I, point. I, I, I mean, uh, we, 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 I guess we got like the 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 little bit of a preview on on Friday with the uh, with the stream being handled by the NV encoder on. Um, we on were the yeah, we, we got a little bit of testing of that. Um, I've done a couple of games i mean i already have all the numbers there in a doc that's rounded out i'll be posting that next week um some things were predictable because you know we are expecting this to perform at least as fast as a 1070 which it absolutely does in every single thing and uh i would say 50 to 60 percent of the time it was beating a uh, 1070 ti and overclocked, it starts tapping at a 1080, not a 1080 Ti by any means, but a 1080. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, I, I, what? Go ahead. I, I, finish I, my I, sentence. I, I, I was, I was, I was just gonna <laughs> say. Well, you can, you can, you can hope for some additional Vulcan performance because there's been uh, some heavy changes to the horse this week. Oh, 
wait a minute, you're doing a segue before I finished, but go ahead. <laughs> it's the Steve. Hang on. Nope, nope. Rewind, rewind. You can't just do that, drop it, and jump right into it. You're like, it's like the horse this week. It's the scene that makes no sense. Take two. Go ahead. No, I refuse. Now, dance, monkey. <laughs> Come on. No. Steve! Science. Vulcan things. <laughs> Proton Force, a symbol. Hey, did you like our Ginyu shit last week? I, I thought that turned out pretty good. Yeah, it didn't turn out too badly. You know? uh, that was a solid five minutes of, hey, man, it's better than just a screenshot. Um, yeah, I'm very perfect. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> we got a bunch of uh, updates with the Steam client this week, uh, like two in the last two days. But the big one, the hot, the hot flaming potato is... Uh, they gave us Welcome the button back. that we've been bitching about oh, yes. and begging for. <laughs> the ability to force enable Steam Play per title properties, including for native games. And this is awesome. This is happy. This is Proton great. button. Woohoo! <laughs> we have that Proton button. Now, you can pick and choose versions. That is wicked neat. And uh, people were like, with Truck Simulator 2, I think, uh, like, hey, this finally works with a controller. And I was like, hmm. Wait a minute, last week I was bitching about uh, Dead Cells not working correctly with a Steam controller. Tried it with Proton using the Windows version. Guess what, kids? Um, that definitely worked. And I thought, lo and behold, after there'll be a link in the show notes, I, we've had Bioshock Infinite, and it was a from... What's that company? Virtual name? programming. VP. Beyond our, our good friends yeah. at VP, and I swear I'd never play it. I've had it for... I've had it... All this time and no time in it. I've never installed it. It's like, finally. And that was immediately met with wah, wah. Nope, you don't get to play that. Uh, Tombs. Tried Tomb Raider. Boasted that. The original port by, what was it? Tomb Raider 2013, right? Yeah, the, yep. the Feral one. 2013. That was using their indirect X and stacked that up against uh, DXVK. DXVK came out on top. Not by a lot, but hey, it's the thing. Uh, Spanx Road 2 ran that. It was a thing, and I think that was the extent of the Windows stuff. But I think this is a good thing, because it's like, why is this a good thing? All right, short term, it's a bad thing. I'm not going to lie to you. But immediately, it's also a good thing, because there are a gang of really, really bad Linux ports. Mm -hmm. And just straight up, und you know, do you know what I thought? Dude, we could actually play Earth 2033. Do you want to review that next week? <laughs> Do I, I don't does the I Linux depot? It. Yeah, does the Linux depot actually download anything? No, because but one no, time but I tried. No, it. I, he never. He bullshit. He was like, no, I sent you the. <laughs> uh, he sent us the Windows keys. This was the shit he was trying to say. But we can we can play the Windows version because I think the Windows <laughs> depot through through the power of yeah. No, Proton. we can totally enable Steam Play and just download the Windows depot. Yeah, oh, <laughs> well, but but like. The, that, that's the thing now. Now, now. now the race is on to get all of the uh, busted Eon ports uh, working with DXVK and Proton. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I tested out uh, Saints Row 4, and I can even get it to squeeze 30 frames a second out on the Vega 11, which was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I did test uh, like all of the uh, VP games that I have, and I tried... The only ones that worked were uh, Saints Row 2, like Ven already mentioned, and um, another one. Uh, I also tried... Uh, it was, it was, it, was one of the, it, it was, didn't work. It was one of the dirt ones you said, right? The yeah, and dirt showdown also didn't work. So yeah. it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 and, and I mean, like now, now, now that this is out in the wild, people can actually who bought uh, feral, feral ports can play their multiplayer games with their Windows using Brethren. Yep. Uh, there's a couple <laughs> other updates that came uh, with this with this uh, beta update as well. Uh, apparently, o Steam Overlay is getting its own Vulcan nerve pinch where you can just have it kill processes. Uh, they're also trying to do a little bit better with the process management because sometimes sometimes when you take down Steam, it doesn't exit all the various applications that it was running. Uh, they're doing IPv6 for uh, downloads on the back end now, mm -hmm. and um, they've updated uh, GNU TLS. I don't think that I don't think it would fix the Rocket League issue where you have to re-symlink the uh, CA certs file in your slash Etsy directory. Uh, just because that that's a distro specific thing, but mm -hmm. I mean it it should it should help with some of the um it should help with some of the online functionality that may have not been working so far. So that big 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 update here, very very yeah no, 
I, it's, you had several uh, updates over the course of the week if you were on the betas, and most of them had Linux-specific fixes. It's like no more zero-byte heresy updates if you had those Proton games and you would get like that zero-byte download every oh, single time on. you started that, Steam. Listen, man, I miss my dose of false hope every, <laughs> every day. Yeah, no, it's, it, there were always zero-byte updates. like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, but what, 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 it's what, like what do you call Valve. It? Um, are you feeling okay? Because several Steam updates in a single week with actual Linux fixes? It's like, have a seat. At this point, you're probably positively uh, exhausted. Well, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was just going to add that uh, Pierre Loop Guru um, mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Twitter, uh, he, was, he was saying some people were experiencing issues um, where uh, Steam Play was doing some funky business. You just had to... Uh, untick the steam play enable for all titles and mm-hmm. restart steam and re-enable. In race in race pedro yeah th- th- that's the thing because the latest beta actually forces that on everyone it mm. disables uh the enable wild west mode tick so you basically have to race to get to the settings and re-enable that and restart steam before it deletes all of your non-whitelisted games yeah, I, I had the uh, very adorable and very un- not unfortunate, but I wasn't. I didn't read that. I didn't get that memo. So, I'm like, why is all this stuff re-downloading again? It was because de- I was just seeing what you know, A/B testing, and yep. I had a gang of stuff. I had the Windows version. It was like, nope, let's go back to Linux versions. And I mean, we were probably like two hundred gigs worth of crap. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Well, people well. were just outright racing. It's like, okay, so we do this r- really quick. Oh, I still have to re-download like four gigs of stuff. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey man, we got thirty thousand games to go test. Oh yes, we do. So as it turns out, uh, Steam has now hit thirty thousand games. This specific article about the matter comes from PC Gamer. Links in the show notes. Come on, as you, usual. you can say thirty thousand one more time, like you're taking a poo. Thirty thousand. Oh, <laughs> edition. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, thirty thousand games available in total. If you're a, a Windows uh, user who is listening to Linux Gamecast for some reason, hi yeah, Cameron, no, how of you doing? Of course, nine thousand and three hundred games released just in 2018 because it yep. requires a <laughs> just one Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I mean that, that, that's 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 what you get, and like the article explicitly calls out like fifty percent of that number basically showed up in the past two years once uh, Steam opened the floodgates. So mm-hmm. this, this 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 is a direct conf- uh, consequence. But we still have the not we still have the problem of I can't really decide what to play. Fuck. I have all these, <laughs> yeah, I, I have all these games and no, can't can't play any of them. Can't make up my mind. Chances are, if your Steam library is anywhere in the like higher three digits, uh, lower four digits, you already have more games than you will ever play in your life. So yeah, you're but probably they're so good. cheap, Pedro. <laughs> they're so cheap, you can just buy them for a dollar. This is a horrible Grab thing. It. I mean, I never thought. You know, um, been using Linux well over two decades. Uh, I'd be in that position where I was actively like, I just need to buy a game. I'm like, what, what's wrong with you, man? Come on, straighten up. I, because, like, even straight up native, over 500 games. I'm yeah. sitting there in my, just mm-hmm. my personal library and like 700 and whatever with Steam Play haven't touched a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, out of my 1,000 and five games in total on my steam library it's like 700 and something are native and Mm -hmm. the rest of them most of them you can actually play with wild west mode enabled uh there's a couple that don't work as i mentioned earlier and strider brought up the point that paladins is now gold well i know what i'm doing tomorrow (laughs) and then played for five (laughs) minutes never touched it again yeah you're gonna tell library I like Paladins. Paladins is free to play, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, we got we got we got the 2018 year in review. This this lovely little blog post from Steam. They give us uh, some of the uh, some of the breakdown here. 40, 47 million active daily users, 90 million monthly active users, 18.5 million peak concurrent users, and 1.6 million new purchases a month. 
that's that's some, some okay stats. Valve's in no danger of going out of business anytime soon. Uh, but they break down sort of uh, what they've been doing over the year. They they go over the uh, the changes to the store. They finally added the dollar do. Um, they updated Steam Chat to varying degrees of success. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, we get a, we get a little teaser uh, at the end of the article. Apparently, apparently they're going to be redoing the the library and store page as well. So get ready to hate that. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 just waiting for like the change to go in and everyone to just lose their goddamn minds. You know, like it's like when YouTube or Google Plus would like change their UI and everyone just lose their mind. Mm-hmm. That that, but yep. like all the time. Um. <clears throat> The interesting, one of the interesting things they were doing uh, that just tickles the network engineer side of me. Hey is man, they, they're they, expanding they, Steam TV. Yeah. Oh yeah, but beyond Question just broadcasting mark, that yeah. one match of Dota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, you no, can but, still uh, st- uh, you can uh, still can't do the Steam broadcasting from the Linux. So man. <laughs> yeah. Um. The 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 one the one interesting thing though is that they're establishing that large private network for uh, game server hosting. They're uh, they're. St- Game sockets API thing uses that as well, um, but yeah, just, just this just the notion of now now they're setting up their own little sub network on top of the public internet to facilitate gaming through Steam. That's something that I think maybe Epic or Discord might need to start looking at, um, just for you know functionality sake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, P- Pedro, you 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 spied something interesting about the uh, trusted matchmaking stuff. That um... yeah, I think it was Ven uh, who specifically quoted this bit in the notes. It's like the technology behind trusted matchmaking on CS:GO is getting an upgrade and will become a full Steam feature that will be available to all games. Yes. That's very good, especially if you are looking to release a game on Steam and you're not sure about the multiplayer bits. This. This is a very good reason to consider Steamworks as your multiplayer bit because No man, listen, Unity <laughs> has a matchmaking <laughs> technically it, it functions. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the news segment. Before then, uh if you are releasing your game on Steam and you're looking at Steamworks and thinking, maybe this is a good idea. Yeah, now you have Valve's infrastructure to basically rely on and just do the matchmaking for you. Hey, Pedro, do you know what's an even better idea than that, though? (laughs) Mm. Releasing a card game in an oversaturated market. Yeah. I mean, re- releasing a paid <laughs> card game in an oversaturated market. Yeah. Yeah. So Val- Valve, uh, with with that new artifact game, it's not by Richard Garfield. Every everyone it had a bit of hype. It's not doing too well. Uh, loses ninety percent nope. of its players <laughs> under two months. I mean, no. This comes to the shock of no one. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. Like again, we 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 we've talked we've talked to that to death. Asking twenty dollars for the just for the intro pack, and then charging for cards when stuff like Hearthstone, uh, Yu Gi Oh, Duel Links, Magic the Gathering, Arena, all offer stuff for free that you can earn in game. You're gonna have a hard time. Yeah. You're really just gonna have a hard time competing against that. People like free shit and will gravitate towards it. So now, now really, really, what this boils down to is we're taking bets on how long you figure it's gonna take for Artifact to go fully free to play. Well, you know. Even the December update didn't help. It, they got like the tiniest little spike. And when that rolled out, that was the thing. But I'm going to say pro tip, man. You know, you don't want to put an entry fee on a game with an already oversaturated market, such as card games, especially yeah. ones that are free. And, you know, I'm I'm 100% grateful. Valve, I love you for what you've done for Linux gaming. But I got to be honest with you, and I don't think I'm talking out of school here, but any developer that is interested in like, legitimately making games they left valve a long time ago because they wanted to actually make a game that shipped Mm -hmm. and the the thing about artifact was i was just like oh we're we'll get uh richard garfield of magic the gathering fame is in the world's most popular trading card game but it didn't help and one of the things that the article mentions, it's like, oh, yeah, the long drawn out matches seem to put people off. Yeah, they certainly did me. It took me 45 minutes to get out of the tutorial. And basically any match takes upwards of half an hour. That's way too fucking long nowadays. Now, so so just, <laughs> not, just out of curiosity, like how long does a Hearthstone match take usually? 30 seconds. 10 minutes. And yeah, At most like, 10 mo- minutes. Yeah. Mo- most magic games you can finish in 20. Um, 
unless you're dealing yeah with no really for, magic the gathering yeah. is like it's totally fine to expect like 30 minutes out of a match especially yeah. if you're in a tournament but for an for a game that i'm playing on my computer that's way too fucking long I, th no. I think I think the other I think the other thing that's hurting it too, and I've I've heard a lot of like the people are playing Magic the Other and Arena complaining about this, is the fact that there's no mobile version, so you can't like play it on the crapper. Hearthstone has but, that where you yeah that that's down to the developers of whoever give is it creating. time. They're definitely yeah. Be like, oh, mobile thing. You know they're like hey we we can do a chat thing too. No, the Discord's ate our lunch and hey we're gonna do mobile game whatever. Listen, you know there's no point in releasing anything that doesn't end with a fucking three valve. I'm just saying. I, I, I don't know. I I would love Valve to like blow me away with a brand new game with a new IP. I think I think the big mistake here was tying it to like Dota and making it so Dota e and Dota focused. And if that's you don't, the if thing. you don't, if if you don't have like exposure to that and you're coming at it just as a card game, a lot of the concepts still make sense. In, well, at the I, end of the day, it failed. No one cares. So <laughs> let's uh, talk about uh, the tricks. It's dead. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is dear proton trick users and developers. Uh, good. That's all I got to say about that. Um, <laughs> what, what is this? The hate mail segment? <laughs> no, this is, the, this, this, this is your friendly neighborhood Venthal uh, chiming in. So proton tricks. It was wine tricks for proton. Self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, the developer. It was sold. You know, joint venture. And it's like, yo, I got to tap out the Linux thing. It was neat. Whatever, but have you heard of this thing called Stockholm Syndrome? No, he didn't say that exactly, but if you read between the lines and just make shit up, you can fit that narrative in here. Um, <laughs> he's back on Windows 10. Uh, he, mental gymnastics and reasoning, basically personal preference, whatever. And uh, he's kind of piecing out on this project. Uh, for me, he's been learning the good O engine. Good on you, buddy. And some other stuff. Uh, so... They are definitely going to be looking for someone to maintain that, which, unpopular opinion, just me being old and curmudgeonly. No. I mean, yeah, I want people to do it. I want it to be a thing. I just don't think it's a good... The the thing Valve got right with Proton, well, and I've said this before, I'm sorry, you know, go get a drink, is the play button. It, yeah. it works or it doesn't work. And then you go, all right, that's, that's my... That, that is my limit of um, time investment that I'm willing to sink into something. But uh, as, you know, Linux users as we are, it makes sense to allow the community to basically try and install every single game and then try and figure out what it is that each and every single game needs. Like, that's how Val figured out that they basically were better off including the core fonts package along with base proton and that enabled them to basically release the second uh the second wave of whitelisted games as early as they did it's like oh look all the games that needed uh, the microsoft core fonts are now there there you go and basically proton tricks specifically it's it just the only thing it does is save you from having to type the wine prefix environment variable with the path to that particular prefix, uh, and then it just runs wine tricks on top of that. It doesn't even include any of the wine tricks code. It just calls wine tricks, so you have to have wine tricks on your system already, and it'll do the work from there. But and, and you you know what? And ultimately, at the end of the day, Proton Tricks isn't going anywhere. That's the beauty of open source projects: yeah. is that mm. the projects will straight up literally outlive you. And we've seen that in a couple of cases, like Debian or Yum. Um, and I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm sort of in the middle here. I agree with Ben that the whole point of Proton is just to, you know, plug and play. Right. But you're, 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 you're always, you're always going to get the people who want to fuck around. And mm -hmm. so at least centralizing that effort and having everyone sort of contribute that knowledge to a singular pool is yeah. beneficial. I mean, it's definitely and there. If and people figure it out, that I have a larger lung capacity. You can easily have talk Pedro <laughs> on multiple occasions. Um, a lot. And there's nothing wrong with it. Some people, the game is just getting the game to work. And once it's working, like, all right, next. Yeah. And the, the, if the, people figure out what exactly is that each and every single game needs, they can feed that back to Valve. They're, they have that going on their GitHub, and you can uh, contribute back on ProtonDB. <clears throat> and Valve will go, oh, okay, that's what we need. And chances are, maybe that game will make it to the whitelist on the next one. So... It's a yeah. give and take type of situation here. Oh, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Valve is keeping their eyes on the results of Proton and Tricks just to just to crib shit. 
So again, open yeah. source. No. <laughs> hey man, Speaking we're all Elf, internet lawyers. Yes. Uh, no, we're not. I, 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 I have a PhD, a phony Harvard degree in law. So, <laughs> but someone decided to uh, maybe push the boat out a little bit, and uh, they have a bit of a Steam emulator for Linux and Windows going, and they want to release it under uh, LGPL v3. And basically, the uh, Steam emulator that they have going on is basically it calls all of the Steam APIs in an open source fashion uh, for all the games that require it, be it for multiplayer, DRM, what have you, whatever. And uh, he made a post on Reddit asking, what is the legality of putting something like that out of there. And he says, it's like, it's not like I'm uh, reverse engineering it. I basically just poked at it until it did something. Yeah, that's called reverse engineering. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, he's asking, it's like, okay, so how likely am I to get a very angry letter from Valve if I release the source of this thing I've been working on? I can think of a hella easy way to find out. Yeah, you just I release know. it and see what happens. Yeah. But as the person uh, who actually went to Valve and it's like emails, I want to talk to a Pedro. human being. I want to talk to a human being. No, man. <laughs> as your uh, as your legal counsel, I, I recommend um, just throw it out there, see what happens. And because I'm your power of attorney, I've already done that. Damn it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no. As the person who got... Uh, someone actually you know an actual human being at valve to say yes you can redistribute the steam client in a distros repository we will release the updated end user license agreement this was back in 2013 uh to reflect this but in the meantime here is our say so that yes you can do it and yeah basically your best chance is to go directly to valve and ask them i want to talk to a human being and i want to talk to the legal department and I want to know if this is a thing, and then you wait a couple of days, and they'll get back to you. That's my opinion. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm like, so here, here's the thing too. Like, Valve, Valve is a bit of a coin flip when it comes to this, because like I, I have an inkling that just because like this could be used to enable piracy and circumventing a bunch of the Steam DRM stuff, that yes. Valve probably would want to put the kibosh on it. But they have surprised us in the past. Maybe maybe they'll open source some stuff. They'll be like, hey buddy, we can't let you do this, but here's something. Maybe, yeah, maybe and maybe even if they something. don't open source anything themselves, maybe they'll look at us going and say, okay, change this to this, change this to this, and you can release it. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. great. Va that's yeah, thing. Valve hasn't it's been a good like, idea. actively. I mean, yeah. no, they haven't actively attacked anything. 100%. No, yeah. And having something like this, a tool like this, I understand like the reason for making this was like, hey, if something happens to Valve, they just peace out. I'd like to be able to play all my games. Understood. Mm -hmm. yep. Understood. Yeah. All right. Did we get any uh, game updates this week? Uh, we, got, one. We, got, we got one. <laughs> Which oh. is gravel. I guess Pedro, I'll take this one yes, since you, it you was the, the last one. Voice, so <laughs> go ahead and take it. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, do, Gravel. Do your best Clint it's, Eastwood. It's, no. Uh, it's a... He uh, is, right now. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, you're fired. It's, uh, it's a rally racing game. Uh, it's got a bunch of different car categories. It's got Can it be the helicopter? Things. No, uh, I don't think you can. Uh, this particular developer also does a bunch of motocross and racing games in general seems to be their deal. And recently they have put out what they claim to be the Linux version of Gravel. But as I discovered very soon after going to their Steam Depot and looking at the file list, this is a virtual programming port. Hello, virtual programming. I haven't seen you release a Linux port in a long, long time. So that was my interest immediately gone. <laughs> so here, 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 here's here's a question for the chairs, though. If you buy if you if you buy a game that's virtual that's uh, backed by uh, Eon, and then you only play it in Proton, does it count as a Heretic purchase? Hard mode. <laughs> you know what I, I, I think they'll be lenient on that 
I, I'll yeah, ask, I, I, Fred. Yeah, I, I feel the chairs would give you a pass because, like, you got you got cheated out of your actual Linux I version. Think, so yeah, I have to go back and double check the scripture. There might be a clause in there for spite purchases. Yes, yeah, yeah. spite purchase. I think spite purchase is probably the key there. Yeah. Uh, but even if you don't want to deal with the on, uh, you can smash that proton button, fam. Again, that mm -hmm. is now yeah. an option. But we do have some new games. Actually, we got a gang of new games this week. We we do. Uh, the first one is we're talking about is Ultra Off Road Truck Simulator. 2019 colon Alaska. <laughs> um, so um, there was a, there's a bit of a request in their uh, in their community forums. They're saying, "Can we get some Linux love?" And um, or, or or at least like try to accelerate uh, getting your game whitelisted on the Proton. And the developer comes back and he says, "Actually, no problem with that. We're making a Mac version, and Mac and Linux are both Unix." And BSD rage intensifies. Good luck with that. Uh, yeah. So okay. making a Linux port is rather simple. Ah, I'd talk to Ethan about that. He would disagree with you. Um, but they're saying if they're gonna if enough requests come in, they'll do a Linux version and we shouldn't and everyone's like, oh my god, that's great. We shouldn't applaud these guys yet. Let, let, let's actually see a delivery before we start patting right. people on Seriously? the back. Seriously, all right, you you big angry naysayer. Give me one example when we've been burnt by Giving false praise to developers that never delivered on Linux, but what's your 3M? Yeah, go, 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 <laughs> go back and yet. watch the last couple of yeah. uh, years. Just yeah. the last couple of weeks, even. Yeah, no, yeah. Right. Pro 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 <laughs> promises, promises, right? Come on. Give, give, give us something. If, if, if you say, right. like, well, okay. here, here's, a, here's fairness, a beta or whatever. All fairness, then... the game's not even out yet. Yeah. It, it isn't, it, yes. It, so it's, it's why, 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 why don't we reverse the hate trade on this and <laughs> encourage them? Hey, good on you. It would be awesome, and I for one am some am looking forward to something like spin tires on Linux without you know having to use Proton. Dude, there is a that community, would be awesome. like a very niche. They're like furries, man. People who like the off road whatever bullshit games, yeah. like that one game you played, man, got a lot of views from people. Like I've never heard it. Spin tires, yeah, yeah. That that was the game. It's like, oh yeah, people are actually into this, and I sort of get why. I. I'm in that mindset, and I would very much like that. This you one, like being uh, stuck in mud. <laughs> I mean, it's also, like it's down to the pig. core element. That's what you enjoy. Pedro, Pedro pig. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, I'm a Portuguese pig. Pedro the Portuguese pig. Triple P. Uh, just, there's going to be an afterlife. Title. There's going to be an afterlife, and you're going to catch it around the corner because whoever's like <laughs> dealing out the wish, you're going to hear really. All right. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, I know. I would totally like to see this on uh, on Linux. I, I, thought, I, I thought you were going to say I would totally like to be reincarnated. No, we can be muddy buddies. <laughs> Mud buddies. Or we can be totally woke. We can't be heroes, in awake. <laughs> you know, mud, mud buddies sounds kinky. But anyways. <laughs> This is Awake Definitive Edition, and uh, the wow, this page is in Portuguese. Um, this uh, this game, they say that it's an adventure point and click type of game, and it's got a very stylized black and white type of uh, graphics thing going for it. And the the uh, the about the game says it was well, supposed to be a romantic play as a possessed trip. caravan. That eats people. No, uh, mm. Mm. you play as uh, one of the uh, people in a couple who went on a um, caravan trip together, who was supposed to be a romantic trip, apparently, uh, and they find a dead body out in the woods, and they need to figure out what exactly happened so it doesn't happen to them. So, yeah, it's the definitive edition for it, it's, it's cheap. Is I'll there give a non-definitive edition? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, I appa know. apparently the the un <laughs> the undefined edition is just the one that they put together for uh, some game jam a couple years ago. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, good. But yeah, no, it is pretty though. cheap. Yeah. If you're uh, if you're in the UK, it's one pound fifty three. So it's not you know going to uh, uh, hurt it's, you it's, all it's, that much financially. It's three dollars and thirty nine cents Canadian. I'm sad that it's not a battery fifty. <laughs> okay, let's see. Up next, we have Unsung Warriors. I gave this a shot, man. Um, it's two D action free. adventure game. <laughs> yep, Iron Age inspired Europe. Okay, it is being nice, as Pedro said. It's priced to sell. You're like, oh, it looks like a mobile game. Yeah, it kind of does. Uh, plays kind of like one two, but it does support <laughs> uh, out of the box. Worked with the Xclone controller and the Steamy controller. 
basically look at the skeletons, look at the bats. That's all you're really going to be fighting the entire time. Unfortunately, I'm going to say it's just another generic platformer with some really soft controls. But the again, it's free. Game. Try it. You know, get it for your kids or uh, I don't know. If you have a Pedro, well, get he'll enjoy it. I, I, I'm well. This, this, this is the this is like the first chapter, right? This, yeah. Hey, hey, look! It's a Kickstarter we can talk about because they have a Linux demo. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so they have a demo. So, it's they're doing that right at least. All right, yeah, so, night, so, calm so, down. Um. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's it's just so rare. It's it's it, it's finally nice to see. Um, but yeah, um, they 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 want people to check out the Kickstarter. They're hoping that this will stir up some interest. But again, this is another studio that doesn't follow the rules about online multiplayer. In that, if you think your game should have couch multiplayer, it should have online multiplayer. Period. Mm -hmm. And full stop. Yeah. End of discussion. Maybe that I didn't. I didn't see anything about that on the on the Kickstarter page. Maybe maybe that's a planned feature. I don't know. But developers, uh, who who is this? Um, Rosarian and Mountaineer. You should you should add some network multiplayer to your game. Then people will mm -hmm. play it. Seems good. All right. Well, three it's people multiplayer, so we can continue like the try yep. it again series. But but this one, maybe. <laughs> um. So, uh, Debris Field, it is a uh, physics-based uh, shoot-em-up. Um, apparently, there's some uh, procedurally generated aspects to this game. Uh, but it's it's a little bit like a retro booster in the sense that, like, there's an emphasis on the physics and drifting and you having to compensate for things. Um, it's a bit expensive. Uh, at about, it's a bit on the uh, dangerous seven... side, man. Danger doesn't come for free, baby. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Be. Um, but yeah, uh, so, uh, seventeen forty nine Canadian for a game that honestly looks like it's worth about ten bucks. Mm -hmm. um, it's ten yeah. pounds. <laughs> well, la well, la di da, Mister. I live in England and not Canada. <laughs> Don't worry. Come March, things will change. <laughs> yeah, hey, man, my, 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 my currency will devalue even more. It actually requires <laughs> DX ten. So keep that on Linux. Woo oh yeah. Oh, I mean, it's got full controller support. Look, positive. We're, we're focusing on positive things. I, I, you know, look, I, actually, I actually, looked at actually, it. It's actually, like, really oh, like it's multiplayer. This, this uh, is a kind of more positive, family-friendly Linux gamecast for 2019. <laughs> well, there are certainly few kind of sort of. So well, let's talk about not, furries not anymore, furries. anyways. Furly, furries and scalies and bears. Oh my! This, the description basically sells for you. Enter a village of talking anthropomorphic animals. Find their secrets. Make friends. Tagged. Sexual content and dragons. Uh -oh. Um, I mean, it, it, it's from the makers of Army of Tentacles and Army of Tentacles Three. I couldn't find Army of Tentacles Two on the Steam store, so maybe they didn't make them or it got taken down. I don't know. But it's, I'm not it's full another screening one. this video just in case I got a nope out real quick. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> look, look, look at that sexy tiger. Look at that sexy. Look sexy. Yeah, it's like, I think it's crap. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're, that's they're, crustaceanist. They're, you know, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's 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 certainly not kosher, is what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, here, here's here's the thing though. Um, I mean, I mean, cl clearly, basically every week we're talking about a new furry dating sim because there's clearly a market for it. Uh, I'm curious, though, if we're going to see an even greater proliferation of them on the uh, stores Epic and Discord. Yeah, I think that uh, Ven hit that one uh, right they, on they the don't, uh, bullseye. They don't, though. They're, they're, they're taking all covers, literally, in this case. Uh, not exactly, especially not with Epic. They seem to very much be targeting like the triple A's and the really popular indie people and going, yeah, we totally want you to have your game on the Epic Store and we'll pay you to make it exclusive for a little bit. Well, right, you know, but they listen, do. in all fairness, <laughs> in all fairness, I mean, if I wanted to play my furry or scaly, I'm glad I know what scaly is because on a pre-show, uh, a couple of months back, I'm like, what if you want to like cosplay as and ha have a sexy time as a fish? Scaly, ta da! I learned something. Yep. Um, <laughs> I would rather get it from Steam than like Frank's Furry and Scaly Shack. Itch. Whatever, give me your credit card number, motherfucker. I mean, I mean that, seems it's like on the, itch. that sounds like the safest place ever. <laughs> it is. <laughs> if it's on itch, I'd probably still download it. But yeah, no, don't, don't go to developers' websites if you're looking for like sex game. That's where malware comes from. Pedro hates sex game. Up next. Pedro just hates sex, period. <laughs> Up next, we have Feudal Alloy, which is, as they describe it, a 
uh, Metroidvania action Metroidvania yeah, type of situation. This looks like somebody watched too much Adventure Time. I mean, yeah. uh, that's not that's not a problem. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I super no, dig the character design. It's a fish that's man. That's totally it's like, fine. It's Earthworm Jim. That's freaking great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically scales, Earthworm Jim in the medieval times, and you get to play as a knight going around destroying some massive medieval robots. Apparently, so, so, uh, wait, and... wait, 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 wait. So if you're a fish and you got like a knight fetish, what the fuck's that? Uh, um, it's a fight. <laughs> get, get, back, get back to me on that. I'll have you an answer next week. All right. Yes. But yeah, no, as someone who very much likes uh, like your standard Metroidvania action platformers, a la Salt and Sanctuary and uh, Dishwasher and Charlie Murder. And Hollow Knight. I think a Hollow Knight, yes. Uh, I think I would very much enjoy this one. But the neutral reviews on Steam may uh, yet change your mind, depending on whether or not this is happens to be your type of thing. Most of the negative reviews seem to be about... Uh, Game balance. Personal taste, and yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's very hard, or oh, it's very easy, or oh, it's very random. It's, Okay, can I get some consensus, please? <laughs> I, I mean, maybe maybe we got to take a look at it, throw some chairs at it. Either yeah. way, I, like I said, I super dig the art design here. The characters, look yeah, it awesome. looks very nice. <laughs> and 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 you get that sort of Hollow Knight-ish backgrounds where like they've clearly done a lot of work with the backgrounds to make it feel like the world is like large and inhabited. Mm -hmm. So, gotta give them gotta give them some credit for that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe. Yeah, it all boils down to how does it handle? Because we've seen some really pretty games handle like shit and it destroys, especially when you're dealing with platforming games or anything yes. like that. And <laughs> it's all about the mechanics, how it feels when you swat and you swing uh, and vice versa. We've seen some really ugly games that play very fucking good and are fun, like Axiom Verge, which is eh, arguably... It's, it's Metroid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's that's dangerously just Metroid. Metroid. Um, <laughs> I, right. I, I mean, I mean, like, it's like, how, how how do I make a good game? I'm just gonna make Metroid. How do I make a game hard? Wait, no, never mind. <laughs> you here. make it Dark Souls. All right, coming <laughs> up next, we talk about Ven's brand new card and all the drivers that come Ludo. along with it. He's lying. And we talk about beavers. All right, that part's true. And we're back with some news. But before we get to that, there's always that little bit of a break that we like to take to thank everyone out there that keeps making this show and the Wednesday show and all of, yes, all of the five dudes shows uh, possible all throughout the week. Because thanks to you, Wait, we do. Wait, that's 10 dudes. Uh, <laughs> we do dudes. five dudes. shows a week. That's four dudes. Five, to the, five, five to the power of fives. <laughs> Five dudes. I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's five dudes five. is about the size of our know. audience. Actually, no, that's a lie. You can sort of extrapolate that from our Patreon. We'll talk five about dudes. that later, but you can... I, I, I don't know. If you, if you want to learn how to count, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click the support button. That? What, what? that? No, no, like flat, not like bent down. There you go. Do it with the other hand, Pedro. Uh, no I believe one that one's that. just this. <laughs> uh, yeah, come, 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 come look at us do Naruto fucking finger <laughs> movements. Um, you, you can support that nonsense by going to patreon.com, clicking the support button. We got all sorts of buttons that you can click to practice your mathematics by balancing your checkbook after accidentally donating us about $1,000. Or you can just support us the regular way. Uh, we got Amazon affiliate links. We got t-shirts at our store. We got mouse pads if people still use mouse pads. If you want to rate your friends one chair, you can buy them a shirt and then just be like, you're a shitty friend. Here's a t-shirt. It's um, great, man. Stealth gift like that. Like, why did you buy me a shirt with chair? I don't ask questions. Just wait. <laughs> it's a lawn chair. Just take it. <laughs> just take it. So I can sit on your chest and do something else. <laughs> Anyways, you drop chairs. Dropping something. Good thing that had a lid on You're it. You're so excited um, about our patrons. <laughs> I am. You know, there's 112 of us donating, or 112 of you guys donating $263 a week to help bring this stuff to your faces. Um, if you become a Patreon, you get access to a bunch of cool stuff like the pre-pre-Super Chosen that sometimes overlaps the regular pre-Super Chosen because we forget to stop hitting record so you can get your double dosage of LGC goodness. Um, you can get access to our uh, Game of Who things. Uh, early, early, uh, you can get access to our Discord uh, channel, so you can chat with us. Access to the show notes, so you can influence the show in sinister and maniacal ways by providing your input and suggesting stories. Horrible and idea. Us feedback. Don't encourage them. 
Yes. And of course, you can also RSVP onto game streams. Ven does one every Friday where people can jump in. Uh, if I'm playing a game that supports more than four players, I'm more than amenable to bringing people in from the chat realm. And Pedro just hates people in general, so everybody plays is in forever alone. Yeah, well established. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be the center of attention. Um, hey, so that, that that does it. I don't think we have anyone special to thank this week. We got Frank. He's hang, always hanging out. All the lovely people on Frank's wall. If you want to get on any of that nonsense, uh, we got a wish zone. If you want to help pick up hardware for this nightmare fuel, that's one of the things we do on Friday that I joke about when I say, but I'm dead serious. Uh, it's where we take all of this equipment. We go, fuck it. Let's play some video games, which we did yeah. last night, Jay, baby. Yeah, we, we, we did. We did some meet the Freemans and we discovered that the synergy Custom levels aren't that great. But uh, <laughs> stick around to the end of the show, watch the video version. You get your name in the credits and all that. It's uh, one of the things we like to do. Uh, what else do we? Oh, like? uh, I would like to thank uh, a certain Aldius. Michael. Uh, you may know him from um, a Discord as Aldius, who got this uh, very nice Sock. fluffy filter that's currently over the uh, T Brown Memorial I microphone. You were going to say, get you some new hands. <laughs> no if only no uh there is a note but it's a very generic one it's just enjoy your gift from michael you you, you can write like really incriminating things and we basically what? have to read oh, them no, out no, loud no. hold up hold up your note again <laughs> nobody buys me anything i feel fucking left out all right we, we, we got we got some drivers we got to talk about all right <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> Um, check it out. 41527 is the new hotness. 103.38 megajoules. Uh, this is a 2060 button. It's pretty much all it is. Uh, it, we do get NV reg restrict profiling to admit users that we've all been dying for supported products. There's probably a new card in here and it's a thing. It works. Yep. I, yeah, I, 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 I can say it on, on okay. 2060, it works. <laughs> on, I, on 1080 Ti, I don't notice any problems. That, that, that was kind of fun. Um, we were getting ready. I was like, what driver are you running? Oh, wait. And I was like, yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, you don't, do you ever play with cool bits, Pedro? Uh, I have it enabled. Okay, I then you have know. the you, you that's at zero. <laughs> you have a 10, 1080, so... When you go to fan control, do you have options for each fan? No. I do. I only have the one. Uh, you can set the one fan. Uh, it's an offset adjustment. Mm -hmm. So it's not like actual RPM. You can't really set like a fan profile. But you can set plus or minus RPMs. Right. I, I, yeah. I've, I've had that on all of my NVIDIA cards up to this one. I have individual for, and not, this is not humble brag. This is like, why? <laughs> you can make one fan tall and one fan small. Um, mm -hmm. You can name it Bob or you can name it Beowulf. In it some video thing. cards, it basically oh. depends on which of the AIB partners or the Founders Edition ones. Founder yeah. Edition. I forgot to tell you, the thing weighs a fucking brick, man. Or it's like this big <laughs> and the 980 is like this big. Uh uh. That, that thing's a brick. Also, um, I was going to say something else, but I can. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, the fans never stop. There's no zero. Mm, that's oh, so it's, odd. it's not like the 980 where like the fan only spins up some of the time. I mean, occasionally, if you're, yeah, you basically got to be playing a game in order to get the, uh, like on the twin yeah. frozers, they just yeah. sit idle. <laughs> But yeah, these are always spinning. But then again, I can't get it over 70C, no matter how hard I've overclocked it. That's what they're binned at. That's, that seems to be what they've been binned at since the 9 series, because my 970 kept out at 69. This 1080 <laughs> nice. kept, yeah, it caps out at 69. It's like, oh, I'm running a superposition, 69 Celsius. Okay, we're just staying there. Cool. Also, you can overclock <laughs> the video memory by 1,000 megahertz, and it just goes... <laughs> And <laughs> nice. So that's that. That's that GDDR six. I don't. Yeah, it is. I don't even trust yeah. that shit, man. It's like, what does it clock that six thousand? What? <laughs> that's wrong. Man. What six thousand? Then you just pull it out of your system and smash it, and you're like, wait, no. All man, that for a goof. If they're gonna bring RAM in that fast, they'd have to update the terms of service. Oh yep. shit. 
So, uh, someone did update their terms of service, and you may remember from last week that Unity was under a little bit of fire. And it basically happened because they changed their terms of service. You and know they you canceled... fucked up when the first thing is like, we've been doing something for X amount of years, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they also uh, canceled their um, partnership deal thingy uh, with uh, Improbable. Uh, which were developing spatial OS. And now, after the community have basically gone, you fucking what, mate? And decided, you know what? We're going to kick up a fuss about this. Unity have decided that they would put out a bit of a blog post announcing a bit of a change to their terms of service. Namely, that basically... Hey, come ahead. on. Come on. You're not, you're not taking this whole thing, man. Um the TLDR for this, Unity caved and Improbable is now going to be allowed to keep working exactly like it did beforehand. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> and, you know, they adopted what we were talking about last week, the Unreal-ish Terms of Service, kind of like an LTS Terms of Service that if you're on that LTS, when they fuck with something, you can still rock and roll with your business. To that, I'm going to say thank you, Epic. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, th th this is all basically a result of Unity having their hands tied. Once the once the backlash came in, it was sort of it was inevitable that they were going to make a move like this because otherwise, people will just stop using Unity. And if Epic's willing to fork out cash to get people off of Unity, a lot of it real. Too. Yeah, <laughs> well, then... you talk about them having their hands tied, but Unity kind of brought the fucking rope to the party last week, the, man. The, the, yeah, that's on true. them. They were they, 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 they were doing a bit of. Uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not assigning blame here, although it's 100 percent Unity's fault. Um, but yeah. I mean, I mean, like. That that's that's the obvious move given 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 the given the PR situation that they they put themselves in, and it it was quite a bit of a nightmare. A lot of indie devs were just like, "Well, I don't like the idea that you know the engine that I'm using can all of a sudden invalidate my keys because I'm doing something that they don't like." You know, you, um, you talk about the PR nightmare, and I, I really got to look at it like you know there was the backlash, but I don't think that really moved the meter over at Unity Land so much as. You know, you, you can love to hate Epic and for very good, valid reasons, but there was a legitimate plan B. If it wasn't Epic, to a lesser extent, Godot. I'm not knocking Godot, but also there was somewhere else to fucking go. I'm like, all right, if you guys are yeah. going to be jerk holes about this, uh, and they're like, okay, maybe we overstep the boundaries on that one look competition is good for no, everybody not, horrible comrade <laughs> and this is just another example of why you don't want anyone to have the monopoly no which you is... take your capitalist filth engine somewhere else <laughs> here in open source land yeah okay. see here in hope in open Oprah. source land it's uh, yes Oprah it's source actually Oprah. uh uh, but it's actually Valve that's winning, you know, ironically, uh, <laughs> because they hold the monopoly when it comes to uh, game clients on Linux. But Unity, for their part, they at least went, okay, Epic's willing to throw a lot of money at this for our change in terms of service and our deals with Improbable. So... Yeah, we're just going to revert that slightly. They basically went back about as much as they could without actually having to revert the terms of service as they were. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. No, that's how many words you put in the show notes for this. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah I, I, and I, I mean, like, here, here's the thing. We're, Epic was... Given that that grant was already in the works, Epic was kind of hoping that Unreal would fuck up in some way. So they can and they did, work. Brad. They, they, <laughs> did they, they, they did. So ho hope hopefully we're going to start seeing a little bit more uh, proliferation in terms of engines. Hey, Jay, um, baby, tell me about your beaver. Oh man, it's it's written it's written in Go, and it goes fast. No, this is uh this is Beaver. It's from this is a GitHub. You can check that out. Links in our show notes. And it's a real time messaging server to build scalable um, in app notifications, multiplayer games, chat, and web, and web apps. So bas bas basically, it's it's uh, just a it's a messaging service. It's a messaging broker. Um, you can use it to create uh, MMO engines. And you know, give given that uh, there there maybe might be a little bit of drama between people trying to make multiplayer games and frameworks for multiplayer games, and the people writing the frameworks frameworks that uh, those multiplayer frameworks are based off of maybe you want something a little more open source 
uh, for your online game server. Um, hey, I man, mean, it's, it's listen. You can download a pre-built Viva right here. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen. You can grab your beaver for your OS of choice. Um, I mean, yeah, it's neat just because it's an engine agnostic way to. Would handle, you call uh, Beaver OS boss? <laughs> Bevos, Bevos, and Butthead. All right. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, the, the, this is fairly limited scope too, because if you, this is just for people who actually want to build their own multiplayer game server. But lo and behold, it's open source. It's available, and you can use it. Yay. Yeah, uh, that's just good. <laughs> up next, speaking speaking of uh, engines, uh, open source, Godot. This is from Juan Linitz, Linitsky. I'm butchering his Linetsky. name. Uh, Linitsky. <laughs> um, he 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 published on uh, Twitter the his 2D list for Godot 4.0 after um, 3.1 is pushed out, and the big one here is you know adding adding the Vulcan support. And we knew this was on the we we knew that uh, Godot was going to handle was going to do something like this because uh, in in the wake of the whole Molten VK um, Valve releasing the whole metal to Vulcan translation uh, compile time thing, um, so. Now, now it's an oncoming feature, and um, I think we have to plug another Kickstarter that's coming up or has started. I gotta double check, but uh, someone is trying to put together a whole swath of uh, tutorials using Godot three point three point one. Mm -hmm. uh, so between between this and the the Kickstarter for the tutorials, hopefully in a couple of years we're gonna start seeing a lot more games coming out using Godot. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and we need a lot more games coming out using Godot because as we've seen companies putting out proprietary software probably not the best idea if you're trying yeah. to you know, make some money out of your game yeah they, they, they don't they don't have 100 percent of your interests at heart they're they yeah, they're, no. they exist to make <laughs> themselves money and if that means helping you make money so that they can make money that's what they'll do yeah. that's the extent of it 100 percent. all right uh hey kind of neat you too this thing it's quake 2 you know it you love it and it's on vulcan so ven posted uh this on uh, twitter a while back uh earlier this week and uh someone the certain christoph kondrak got the uh quake 2 source port actual actual source the, uh, the guy code. who did the vulcan thing also got it working on linux yes uh got it working on the Linuxes, and yeah, it's Quake 2, we're running on Vulcan, and my immediate thing was, okay, can we get Doom 3 now, please? Nope. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure someone in their basement is hacking away at that. I, and I mean, I mean, the, the, the real conclusion is, lo and behold, using open standards and cross-platform technology means that porting your game is relatively trivial. Who'd have thunk it? Well, that's, that's <laughs> definitely one of the things, man. He was like, you know, for like the extra challenge, he used like the original game code. Yeah. So there's no SDL like uh, libraries in there. And yep. that's what he said, man. I mean, it worked basically out of the box, you know, not counting creating the platform specific surfaces, but... Hey, because Vulcan, it's a thing, you know, it's like, you can do that, get it everywhere, you or you could do it in DX12 and wah, wah, uh, Windows Phone. <laughs> and Strider, you'd need to convince Bethesda to actually get Vulcan into Quake's Champions. Good luck with that. Hey, man, <laughs> they might. Oh, and yes, Vulcan <laughs> Doom 3 is already a thing, Pedro. Oh, check it out. How nice. <laughs> eat, eat, eat shit, Pedro. <laughs> shit. RTX, RTX on. on. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, ah! Q2 VKPT is the first playable game that is entirely ray traced in a video because fuck you, that's why. We're, we, if why you, not, right? If you're going to do a fuck you, that's why, it's got to be done with Quake or Doom or something like that. Uh, yeah, th this is just ray tracing. You can download it, attempt to compile it, and um, I mean, it works with the demo files, supposedly. I cloned the Git and I was like, okay. Doop to doop, and I was like, "Oh, you got a little reasonably well documented uh, build file," and looked at it and put the stuff in there I needed. Dependencies, uh, libping twelve. If you're on the Ubuntu's, that's just libping dev. By the way, if you're trying to play in the home game, uh, it bitched out with some error that I was like, "I don't know what that is." I mean, it was not immediately obvious, so headed back over to get looked at the issues. Saw some other shit that was in my future. If I resolve this error. <laughs> guy gonna give us a week to bake and then we're gonna come back and i'm for like probably all of 30 seconds going to take advantage of my 
tensor giga ray chomp thing rays and be like, all right, next. Don't care. <laughs> Didn't get it for that. Yeah. I, so, I mean, that's uh, the only RTX on you're going to get under Linux, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty much yeah. for a long time. Yeah. But look uh, at did, it. It's so RTX y and on. Yeah. I, uh, back in the day, it's like a couple of months ago, I got uh, the path racing version of uh, Quake 2 actually running on Linux. And that just built out of the box and it ran pretty well ish. I got like uh, 40 something FERPs out of the 1080 at 1080p. But yeah, Pedro, it's path I racing. Am so. Dying <laughs> to get 30, possibly 35 FERPs at 720. <laughs> I, I mean, I am. Quake 2. I mean, listen, this isn't my future, man. <laughs> I will not be denied. Uh, I but don't. yeah, it looks amazing. And the path racing one already looked pretty goddamn good. This one just happens to make use of the RTX bits, which. Admittedly, on Linux, we kind of need something too that your peasant ass doesn't have. Oh, that's fine. I, 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 mean, I mean, like, yeah, at, at the very least, having some functional programming examples of how to use the RTX stuff under Linux would be really yeah. nice, just yeah. so that other people can start using it. Uh, I, I, I'm on team. Uh, here's here's me being something that is just like developed for Nvidia. Is like, let's not all get behind that technology. Yeah, I, yeah, I see that. that. I get that. that. That's, 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 that's a fair point. Hey, look, here's my foot. Blam. Um, but <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's not make the whole RTX. Let's thing not give thing. NVIDIA any more reasons to Play completely overprice a cool. 60 let's series. Let's not adopt card. it. Yes. <laughs> make it like an MMX extension. Make it optional. Indeed. Make it something that's easily done over hardware without having to have dedicated tensor cores. How about that? Well, you know, to, okay, god damn it. Now I'm coming back around to the they did Nerd spin, fight. They did spin the silicon to put the <laughs> hardware on there. So might as well fuck around with it. Let's just I I I mean and and that, and that's more my take on it, right? Like cuz no no commercial games are going to be using that feature under Linux period. So if people do Pretty want much. to use it, it's nice like I said, it's nice to have some like functional programming examples so people can crib from it. Do you know a game yep. that is in desperate need of RTXing? <laughs> Pac-Man. God Please damn don't right. say Oh god damn it. <laughs> so, uh, this <laughs> Is a uh, deluxe Pac-Man or deluxe Pac-Man? Tell 2. me with a straight face, this would not be greatly enhanced with real-time ray tracing. You I, know, I, 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 I need, I need some marquee tags it. and under construction <laughs> banners. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, that that was my first thing. I came to this website. It's like, oh, that looks like it wouldn't be out of place in the nineties. Though that said, it does make better use of like horizontal screen real estate than any. Um, you know, um, bootstrap based design website nowadays, but no, oh my God, this is, uh, yeah, this is basically the source code for, uh, deluxe Pac-Man two being released under a very open source license. One that basically prohibits you to, uh, make any money out of it. It's MIT, MIT man. Come on. It's not like, yeah. like he, Pedro, I, uh, you, you're making it sound like you crafted some malicious license. Like, Whoa. I'll, 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 also, I mean, I'm 99.999% I'm, I'm sure that Namkai Bando would not want you making money off of Pac-Man, period. This is yeah. true. <laughs> Even if it's like, you know, a, someone who worked for the original Pac-Man who happens to release a new and improved version using his own code you're, you're and basically it it's like man. yeah i don't want to make any money just to incur just to you know not even try to incur the wrath Listen, of namkai bandos at lawyers. the end of the day maybe somebody just wants to take a look at how the fuck do you make pac man under dos yeah it's true <laughs> it's sick so and it's there so for viewing enjoyment all right well that does it coming up next we're gonna party hard man we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna drink too much oops, smoke oops, too oops, much oops, and oops. raise the dead and then fall through we're the floor raise them again party time ladies and gentlemen throwing chairs it's chair party this week, uh, this week we're doing the chairquisition about skeleton dance party. If you don't know what the chairquisition is, it's where we take a game. We tell you if it launches, if it performs, how the graphics are, how the controls are, and if it's if it's fun or not. And we we give some scores based on lawn chairs. 
you can you can see the breakdown. Well, it's pretty self explanatory. Uh, this week, uh, like I said, skeletal skeletal dance party by Kentucky Games. Skeletal dance party. Nah, <laughs> see that would that would make this game awesome if it was skeletal <laughs> dance party, right? Am I, right, Frank? Back me up. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's, it's done by uh, Cantaloupe Games, it's done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about uh, eight ninety nine of your local particular currency. What is it? Necromancers, Palatins, Skeletals, Monsters. Oh my, you play as Riva, a young fox-eared necromancer who embarks on a quest to host an awesome dance party for all her friends, who happen to be the reanimated skeletons of her enemies. Uh, the devs did send us some uh, keys over Curator Connect, so we got to give them a big old thank you for that. And let's get started on Ubuntu. How did it work then? Oh man, over here on the 1804 box of business, Ryzen, you know it, you love it. 16 gigajoules of RAM, SSDs, NVMEs, all that fun stuff. With a brand shiny new short bus video card, the 2060. Um, no issues, everything ran. I mean, no problem. Uh, it did turn into a zombie process on me one time. However, uh, I couldn't repeat it, so I played it at UHD 3040-2160. No issues. Uh, I'll agree with Pedro. Slow-ass load time, but nothing to knock it. What's it look like? It's Minecraft with Vaseline smeared on the lens. Also, voxels as a thing. You can technically use a controller with this game. I don't suggest it. Uh, Wazd is your best friend here, and everything eventually works. Clean bill of health, man. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 28 64-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 1080 Ti, it launches and it holds a solid 60 at 1080. Uh, I will say, though, due to the lack of font scaling at UHD, I could not read what the fuck was going on, and so I had to play it at 1080. Um, Graphics-wise, I mean, yeah, it's voxels. It looks like voxels. Which is it voxels looks... or is it faux voxels? I, th I, th I think it's actually voxels. Um, hmm. But um, I mean, it's it, on, a, on you can do good looking voxel stuff. This is not one of those times. Uh, but I mean, it still shows up on screen. Um, yeah, uh, the control wise standard was fair. Uh, it doesn't like my scroll wheel though. I have to scroll really, really hard for it to cycle through the undead dudes. And oh man, I am not a fan of the the camera in this game at all. Uh, no sir. But again, it all works. So I'll give it a clean bill of health of. Uh, on my end, it, uh, well, it launches and remembers settings, which I guess it's something to say for a Unity game since last week. But uh, the odd thing, at least on my end, is when it came to the performance. Some conversations while you're in the hub and you're in the latter levels and you have most of the uh, the characters in, um, in the little hub area... Uh, some conversations that you have with the little Demulich dude, uh, they just slow down to the point where like one single character shows up every second and I have to all tab out of the game and back in for it to just skip the conversation and let me continue playing. Uh, also, during the load times, it uses exactly one core uh, to do the random level generation and it takes for fucking ever. Uh and uh yeah at uhd if you have a lot of skeleton dudes in some parts of the uh of the level it the ferps drop down to about 40 so it does hold 60 most of the time but yeah they drop down to 40 if you're uh in a particularly uh, graphically intensive area of the level the graphics for themselves are like proto-Minecraft style thing, like Smith and, Winston, uh, Smith and Winston that we talked about last week. Uh, there's also an issue with the force fields, at least on my end, where there seems to be some Zet fighting between the transparency layer and some other purple texture. Uh, the music can get a bit repetitive if you're going at a slower pace through the level, but it works, and I'm pretty sure I've heard the voice actress for Riva, the main character, somewhere. Probably uh, Dust and Elysian Tail. Uh, and the controls, the default controller bindings are weird because, yeah, you spin the camera around with the D-pad and you move the cursor with the right analog stick. You know what? But that's that's easy enough to change, so I'm not going to ding in a chair for that, though I will ding them a chair for the performance issue, so it gets three from me. Oh, yeah, no, those load times are atrocious. I think they're, like, they're knocking on a minute, because I remember sitting there, like... It takes oh. a while. <laughs> it does, it does, and it does not care. And I was running this off the NVMe drive, too. Oh, I was yeah. just like, does that, yep. does that help? No, it doesn't. Nope. No, it don't. 
<laughs> all right, all right. So there, there you go. How about how about the fun though, Ben? You enjoy? Do you enjoy yourself? This is the part. This is where we get opinions, and we just explain to you whether or not it worked between Kabuntu, Fedora, and Solus. Let me tell you my experience with Skeletor Dance Crypt Party. <laughs> <laughs> As we've all said, the controls for this game are atrocious. However, they might only suck just a little bit. They might not actually be atrocious, but it's hard to tell with your minions constantly dry humping you. But this is a physics game, and I've definitely been playing for over an hour uh, when it wasn't a zombie process. Uh, and turns out, you know, I can move shite around, but I've yet to find a reason really to do it. It's not really clear to me from what I can resurrect, you know, what's dead or what... I need to regain that ability because sometimes you just can't bring the happy, fun, dancing skeletons back. That's the thing. Zero fucking idea. What exactly triggers picking up items in this game or whether or not uh, I need them? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. This is all down to my stupidity, but um, just kind of work with me here. Speaking of voice direction, the fuck was given to that sweet lass doing the main character? <laughs> Your little witch. I mean, did they, they, did they open the booth and they look at her like my TD will look at me and go, okay. Uh, I want sensual, frightened young girl with just a hint of weeb. Do, do you think you can do that? Because that's, that's what you fucking delivered. That's how it came across, Brad. It did. Um, the skeleton voice tried to be humorous. Uh, that guy, he was passable. Uh, I should say the voice lines by that particular person was passable because it kind of starts off. You're like, oh, this part's going to be completely voiced. And it's like, yeah, not so much. You kind of got to play along read between the lines with that by the time i reached the first templar it kind of already nerfed the oons oons wub wub in the background which wasn't bad it was just kind of repetitive replaced it with something a bit more appropriate for this game some crash test dummies um after dripping around some more it kind of became clear that all the crypts that you're seeing here in the video audio listeners it's crypts neon crypts with dancing skeletons they're kind of rehashes of the same thing in different orders uh it does try to be cute it does try to be clever. Hell, it even tries to be a physics, physics game built with the Unity engine. But at the end of the day, um, it's kind of just something to fuck around with for like 30 minutes. Because, hey man, it's got dancing skeletons. What's not to love about that? Well, uh, it didn't do it for me. So, one, one. Womp womp. Yeah, I mean... It sort of plays like a single player MOBA, and when I when I was writing when I was writing my spiel for it, I was like, actually, you know what this really reminds me of? Necro almost. Um, because it's the same sort of thing where you kill monsters and you raise them from the dead and you have them follow around you follow, have your creeps follow around you, and then you sort of just direct them and you have a couple attacks that you can do and a couple support spells. But for the most part, you accumulate your gaggle of skeletons. Uh, and then just sort of wade them into your enemies and hope that you can do more damage to them than they can do to you. Um uh, and then sometimes they get stuck on stuff. Mostly you. Uh, that's that's mm -hmm. what I found is they, they they kept they the stupidest decision in here was having the skeletons actually block your way as the player because then you just get trapped and murdered in a couple of cases. Um, Listen, man, it's but, leg hump leg hump revolution. Hump hump hump, hump revolution. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, and yeah, like I so I, I read Pedro Stick later on about uh, inventory management. I'm like, okay, you know, what? I'm gonna give that a shot. The inventory system in this game is fucking atrocious. <laughs> My God, yes. um, it's you're you're better off just kind of like doing the crapshoot, and then just there's enough skeletons and dead things in the in the dungeon that you never really have to worry about it. You just have to make sure that you have more numbers than your opponent. Um. And uh, yeah, the cr the crowning jewel for me is the camera because you you're so you're aiming with the mouse, you're directing things with the mouse. Um and now you're also having you're you're doing unit selection with the mouse and then you're also using the you're us using the click down scroll wheel to move the camera around. And that just gets that's just too crowded. They needed to find a better way of handling camera control. Um Mind you, mind you, it's leagues better than what they have on, like, if you're trying to use an actual controller, because mm -hmm. then that's just not playable. Isn't that it has fun the fun experience of, really? <laughs> it, has, it has the trying problem, where I was stuck playing the fucking wizard for trying to, and I was trying to use the controller, and you need to, like, aim and, like, move stuff around, and this is, like, the worst parts of that, just as the telekinesis mechanic here. Um... 
the writing really didn't do anything for me. I, I tried to read through the dialogue and it, I, I just couldn't. Um, after a while, I, I uh, axed the main soundtrack and started listening to uh, Terminal Redux by Vector because that's just a really good album. <laughs> And then eventually one of the dungeons glitched and didn't lower a door after I killed everyone and accomplished the objective to get to the next objective. And then I gave up. I can, there, there's some okay ideas in this game. And like it, ultimately it's harmless, but it needs a lot more polish, I think. Um, if this was a, if, as, as a first attempt, I can see this being like, okay. I'd, I'd be interested to see what comes out of this developer um, as like a second or third attempt. But... I, I I can't do it for this game. Gotta gotta give it a chair. Just a lonely single chair. Yeah, it's brutal legend without the awesome soundtrack. But in losing the soundtrack, I feel like it wins in not ham fisting the RTS bits <laughs> down your uh, throat. And this is the bit where I started to run into that dialogue issue. I actually got video of it. See? See how slow the text is showing up? Yeah, when it skips the text, that's when I all tabbed out of the game. Uh, the only strategy here is to basically carefully pick the equipment that your character has and what your skeletons use. Basically, just have whichever skeleton happens to prefer melee weapons just get them to the biggest sword or the biggest axe you can find in the level or if it's a wizard get them a staff or if it's one of the bards make sure they have the loot that's it that's all you need to worry about the hats they seem to be a bit more random it's whatever they feel like at the time that loading screen is going to take a little while uh if you have a full roster from all the skeletons you can summon and all of the demi liches slash pumpkins that you can summon from the dead uh npcs then basically you can just steamroll your way past the level and anything that shows up in your way just gets trounced immediately uh, the real difficulty is uh, in guiding your character and her army of flailing skeletons through the level. The AI on those skeletons often gets caught in the scenery, each other, and your character. Uh, even at the best of times, this isn't. This is a game that will not blow your mind. Uh, but as a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, it's not bad at all. I, if it weren't for the performance issues. I would be totally okay with giving this one three chairs just because you can completely shut down your brain and just play it. And yeah, but the performance issues are very much there, so two chairs from me. All right, well, I mean, it, the the, I the game, the game is certainly in. rough Damn. around the edges. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it, it, yes it, it is. The loading it, it, screen it, is still going for those audio listeners out there. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, no. Like it, it doesn't help if you've gone to that level before either. It just will. It will take like a minute. Yeah, it's well. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, do, do we got anything else? We any any cherries we want to put on top of this Sunday before we? Uh, it wasn't offensive. I mean, it was a good. Uh, for thirty minutes, it's entertaining. Uh, you know, it's like, oh look, skeletons and they're dancing. But why are they your opponents dancing? And it it, it tries. <laughs> it tried. I'll give it that. It's it's a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, and in that I'm willing to excuse it a lot of things, but the, that those performance issues need to be fixed. Yes, also <laughs> you know AI pathfinding and you know general yeah functionality. <laughs> All right, coming up next, it's once again it's a very Jordan focused hate mail segment, so I'll do my best to give answers to the questions that y'all yearn to know the answer to. And it's about time we put a bow on this. What do you say? Agree? Disagree? Well, there's a very easy way to let us know whether or not you'd like these episodes to be even longer. You can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little choosy box, and uh, fill out the form. There's not even a captcha anymore. It's the internet in 2019. Go figure. Uh, it's a very... It's... Well, it's the most likely way that we will see what the hell you want to let us know about. That was a weird sentence. Listen, and... man, you tried. That's all it's that not, It's not the first one. Right. It's not the first one in this episode. Yeah. I think at, I've been drinking point, a bit too much coming in, You're being graded with crayons, man, so you don't have to worry. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Although they are delicious. <laughs> crayons. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, okay. uh, first up, we have Frick. 
maybe not that particular Rick, regular erect. And uh, he's asking about DND for Jordan, I guess. Human elf? Are you also using improvised homebrew things? I think those uh, little two things are like the uh, little hats. Uh, it's cool if you do. Uh, is the story original, by the way? Jordan um, is delightfully excited. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, to answer the question, we're using we were using uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics by Goodman Games. Uh, we were also using a third-party supplement called uh, Crawl Jammer. Uh, you can find it on Drive Through RPG. I actually re- recommend picking it up. It's good for like weird Kirby-esque planetary romance stuff. Um, cause, yeah, the the story was entirely original. It was actually repurposed from another campaign that never really got off the ground. And uh, thanks. Like like I said, um, I'm I'm interested in doing more of this stuff. Uh, Sandy's planning something for the next time we do one of these RPG things. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be dungeon mastering for once. Well, he does it all the time, anyways. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more of it, let us know. We'll I never get invited. Later. You, I, I invited you. <laughs> There's probably a reason for that. <laughs> I invited you seven years ago, and you said no. So eat shit. Uh, next. No. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have Orn, and Orn uh, asks, "Wow, this is a long one. Let me cut through this one, man. Let do. me cut through this one so we can get All out right. here today." <laughs> um, Orn, you know him. You love him. He's probably watching right now. He's like Jordan. Play. I don't know what to do. What to think or what to eel. He said feel, but it's eel because he's Swedish now. Swedish people aren't funny. He's in Sweden, by the way. Um, fresh off the boat from Bangladesh. Mm-hmm. They're nice and they wear their heart on their sleeves. But goddamn, dude, they are sober, sober sighted. Sighted, yes. Sober sighted, whatever, <laughs> words. Please help me. I don't know what to do. How can I be more serious and unfunny if I were to survive in the land of the Norse people? Also, the snow thing is funny. Orn. Find snow funny, T.I.L. Also, they get wasted after like four cans of this watery beer called Norlin Gold. And people around here don't like whiskey. Jordan, I plead to you, please, play me for <laughs> I not having the love to give. Signed, Potato Thunder Nipply Doodads. Porn. Uh- Pasties. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know, man. If you're if you're having trouble bonding with the Swedes, maybe you got to you got to meet them on their level. Offer them some some berries. Offer to cook them a meal. Going all bork bork bork, and um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what, what 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 other Swedish stereotypes can I pull out of my ass. Born, I'm gonna give you some advice, man. Old man Van. Unfortunately, you fucked up. Your first day in Switzerland, you gotta kick someone's ass, especially when you're going to Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> Take a detour to Switzerland and go there. beat the shit out of someone and they, then go to Sweden. It's the same country, man. <laughs> right. I'm, 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 I mean, you can't be racist against Europeans, right? <laughs> you, but you're going to try, right? Go ahead. Uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a power through it, though. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm just in Finland, too. They're, no, people aren't usually like overtly funny. It's more of like a subtle situational thing. I don't know if that's if that's not your jam, then you gotta. You, I, I'm I don't know. You gotta adjust your sense of humor. I don't find know, man. other I find other Swedes one. that you find funny. Go hang out with PewDiePie and become a Nazi. I don't know. This Do kind of feels want. like you just called all white people boring, which yeah, because they are. White people suck. Only Canadians. Jordan Swung, 2019. <laughs> don't at me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Pedro! Whoa, <laughs> boring. You, boring's you, our you. word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By, by the way, y'all can definitely at Pedro about that. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> Apparently, I'm not white. Stay out of that one. <laughs> what, what, whatever you say, you cracker ass cracker. Oh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on that motherfucking bombshell. That's the music. You can always find us, hopefully. Maybe we'll even still be allowed to uh, do the internet thing next week after that nightmare. I'm Vin Stone, at Vin Stone, um, on Twitter. It's Thing. I hang out there. It should be at Linux Gamecast, but I expected like three people to ever watch this shit, so we're kind of stuck with that. Uh, Mastodon, mass.linuxgamecast.com. That's Thing. Go check us out there. Uh, look at all of uh, Civic's weeb shit. It flies through. It's mm-hmm. kind of brilliant. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Google Plus is still around, but I'm not. Not for long. 
I'm Jordan Spong. You can find me vehemently agreeing with Pete Steele about what we need to do before we get fed at The Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spong on Google Plus for the remaining few months that it's on. Um, and Frojo at our Mastodon at mass.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> and you can find me being uh, very subtly racist at Unaccounted4 on right, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, at Unaccounted4 with the actual number 4 on uh, mass.linuxgamecast.com. If I actually went there, because I am there, I follow people back when they follow me. It's just that I'm not there all that it's often. It's new things. They confuse them. It <laughs> took them a week to figure out how to update the Twitch. So, you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> that, that, that it did. <laughs> let's be honest. and roll some credits. Thanks, everybody. Dynafire. Bye-bye. See, what, what threw and me off about Twitch is that... You peasant. Oh, yeah. See, what, what, what threw me off about updating, going to updating Twitch is that, like, YouTube will autosave it after a couple seconds and Twitch doesn't. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, you mean that, you, that, that's, yeah. YouTube actually has a functioning system that isn't, like, cryptic and backwards? It looks like something from the <laughs> early 2000s? Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Earth Twitch was I never got the notifications. Mike, like, oh. Drummer and all this. <laughs> Pedro's, no, Pedro's is drunk. He's drunk on power, yes. also alcohol. <laughs> I can be both. I can be both drunk and in the land of limbo. Limbo Brexit, which is like the worst kind of limbo. So, Pedro, here's here's a question. How low can you limbo? Not very. And, and can you show us right now? No, the credits are rolling. Well, they won't be in a while. So Listen, man, we'll know by the screaming. The, the show will be over in a while. Well, I mean, we, we always get that last-minute stinger. I, I just want to hear the loud crack from Pedro's spine as he accidentally fucks himself up. I mean, that loud crack happens whenever I get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> well, good luck, Frank. I hope to see you later after you've... Goodbye, Frank. the galaxy. Oh, shit. Busted. Died by <laughs> oh, We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>